Okay, and this is a Macintosh MC2100. Uh, allegedly has one channel out. I'll be uh, disassembling it first and checking some things before I even apply any power. Okay, and it does have a blown amplifier channel. This channel right here, and uh, shorted output transistors, and the usual uh, bad emitter resistors, and so forth. And the driver cards associated with that has uh, several burned parts. And we'll just have to see what kind of shape the semiconductors are in. Some of those are rather hard to get anymore. If they check good, we'll probably be forced to use them. And I'm going to have to pull the uh, amplifier. Uh, parts out of there and that's going to require some wires to be desoldered here and so forth uh, just to get these up far enough for for access. I'm also planning to replace these two capacitors. They're known troublemakers 470 at 25. There's uh, two basic uh, designs that Macintosh used on their uh, big transistor power amplifiers. Uh, when they blow up uh, this is the type of thing you see. Uh, usually of course all the output transistors are bad now in this example um, you're going to have some 0.33 ohm resistors those typically go and some 0.56 ohm resistors uh, across which they develop the drive uh, those always go in my experience and uh, now on the uh, this is model this is used on the uh, uh, models similar to the 2100 the 2105 and the 2300 this is going to take a while <coughs> thought some of the other Mac amps were unusually difficult to work on. This one's probably worse than most. This is actually a personal project. Uh, this amplifier was scrapped. Um, somebody didn't want to put that kind of money into a 35 year old amplifier, uh, particularly since it was going to cost about 500 bucks at retail to fix it. Thankfully, my labor's free to me. Just wanted to show you uh, why it was going to cost $500 to fix this amplifier. This is a brand new driver board from Macintosh. They're still available. $150 bucks our cost on that board. And so uh, you can see why the repair was going to be rather on the expensive side. But it sure beats the heck out of trying to, uh, to repair that old board. Okay, going to record a little bit more of the process here. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, painstakingly removing these uh, 0.33 and 0.56 ohm resistors and replacing them. The last one of these I did was about 25 years ago. I've forgotten how much fun they were. By the way, sorry I haven't been blogging any repairs lately. get back with the program on that. Okay, and sorry for the bad angle. Uh, you're not going to really see much right now. I'm replacing the output transistors at this point. <sighs> well, half of them. I still have to do the emitter resistors, etc. on the other half of the stack. I'm saying nasty, son. My plan is to uh, also change out the, uh, the output transistors on the other channel. Uh, I don't have those yet, but we'll get the amplifier running first. Only the best output transistors, brand new on semi MJ15003Gs from a reputable distributor. Okay, once again, this is that Macintosh uh, 2100 power amplifier. Uh, I do have it back together and running at this point. Um, uh, unexpectedly, one of these uh, uh, filter capacitors was bad. That was unfortunate, but at least uh, I had one. And uh, um, some smaller capacitors were bad on this driver board, resulted in a frequency response problem. I took care of that. 
and I'm going to plan to replace the outputs on this channel uh, just on general principles uh, to have uh, uh, the same matching output transistors as the other channel and uh, uh, also it'll be good to go for the next 35 years maybe so anyway uh, and there's uh, both channels running uh, equal and strong at a, right now at about a, a one and a half watts uh, per channel but of course we'll check it for full power operation as well Much heat sink compound on the original one there. said this is the one with the insulator on it, the driver. I don't think any of the others have insulators. Although there would be one other driver, it, its collector must be at heat sink potential. A little alcohol to clean off the smeg. I believe I know why this amp blew up in the first place. The uh, barrier strip is damaged between the common connection and the 4 ohm connection. And the 4 ohm connection was obviously the one that w had been in use. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to figure that the speaker wire is shorted together there at the 4 ohm tap. So I mentioned previously, these two capacitors are troublemakers.